Okay, hey there, uh, it's Forrest, and so I am uh, bottling and labeling tons and tons of five mils and sample sizes of what it is apparently uh, your favorite scent of the April Fool's collection, which is called Hoodwink, and Hoodwink is designed to smell like Thai iced tea. Um, I'm really happily surprised that you guys like it so much, uh, or at least like the idea of it so much. You have yet to receive any of it because I have it here still. Um, but I thought I would tell you a little bit about the story behind this, uh, this collection. So April Fool's Day is probably my least favorite quote-unquote holiday. I don't know if it even qualifies as a holiday. But um, I've never been a big fan and so when it came time last year, 2019, to do a collection for uh, April, I figured I would just kind of lean into that and uh, do something that I'm not comfortable doing, which is gourmand fragrances. Um, I tend not to wear gourmand fragrances as my skin chemistry doesn't play well with them for the most part. There's always exceptions to every rule. But... Um, it wasn't an area of fragrance or scent, I should say, uh, that I was really exploring all that much because I don't like it. So uh, I figured since I don't like April Fool's Day, I would do something I don't like. <laughs> this is this is my warped uh, logic at play here. And um, it also happens that my friend Sarah introduced me to the Great British Baking Show, which I fell madly in love with, and is just like such, if you haven't watched it, it's just the sweetest, most adorable, most soothing show. Um, it's just wonderful. And so I put on the, the show and I started creating some blends, some of them um, that were inspired directly by uh, bakes that were happening on the show, and some that were just things I like to taste, not necessarily smell, but taste. Um, fast forward to 2020, uh, a few people had spoken highly of that collection and uh, told their friends about it. And on places like uh, Indie Makeup and More subreddit, um, really got a, a bit of a buzz going about it. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I was really happy about that, but I was also feeling kind of a pressure to create some some new and exciting blends um, to go along with that, that same theme. So uh, Hoodwink and Flim Flam are not uh, flavors that were, to, to my knowledge, I haven't watched every single season of The Great British Baking Show, but to my knowledge, they, they were, were not featured on the show. They do, however, feature really highly in my top 10 list of things I want to eat. Or consume. Um, and so Hoodwink is the name. Incidentally, if you haven't already guessed, names like Flim Flam, Hoodwink, Bamboozle, uh, Bollocks, uh, <laughs> Balderdash, Codswallop. These are all names that I chose for uh, the fragrances because they are euphemisms, often British euphemisms, for bullshit. Um, and that is often what happens during the time of year that we call April Fools. So anyway, uh, back to my favorite flavors. Uh, Flim Flam is based on mango and sticky rice, which I could seriously put in my face forever. I mean, it's one of those, if you're stuck on a desert island foods, what do you want to have? Like, just give me some of that and I'll be okay. Which fortunately would, at least in its raw form, occur on a desert island. Maybe not so much the rice. Anyway, so mango and sticky rice. Totally here for it. And uh, created a, a scent called Flim Flam uh, that I think really does a pretty good job of uh, giving the impression of mango and sticky rice. Mango was surprisingly hard to do because most of the notes that I explored when um, putting together the, the recipe, they didn't smell like mango. Like <laughs> It says mango on the label, but that's not what it smells like at all. So uh, 
I, I created a, what's called an accord, which is basically, it, it's a made up version of a, a scent note. Um, so I made up some mango for you and I think it's pretty dead on. Uh, I like it and I'm a big fan of trying it. I mean, as long as I'm going to do gourmands and I don't really like doing gourmands, they might as well smell like the real thing, right? As much as I can possibly do it. Um, if you have had any of our Nui Cobalt Designs honey or bee themed blends, you may notice that the honey notes in those are, if I, if I may say so, they're pretty, they're pretty good. Um, and that also kind of came from a personal challenge of working with something I didn't like. And uh, in my days of being a uh, kind of an observer and a and a customer of indie fragrance, I always had a really hard time with any fragrance that had a honey note in it because for whatever reason, it just wasn't working with me. So I kind of made it a mission to explore honey notes that I enjoyed, that, that really seemed authentic and that really seemed like the real deal. And frankly, I had to just kind of pull a couple of tricks um, to, to make that work because it's not easy. One of the things, I'll just, tell you right now, one of the tricks that I use to achieve uh, an authentic honey note, especially if I want it to be more leaning toward a uh, honeycomb or beeswax, is I have bee pollen and I throw it in the jar and it, it infuses the oil. I just, I have, you know, the little kernels of bee pollen that you can buy from health food stores. I throw it in the jar. So if you're vegan and uh, you're very strictly vegan, so you do not use bee products, please be aware that if I list honey as a note or beeswax as a note, it's probably actually in there. And so you probably should avoid that one. Um, where was I going with all this? Basically, <laughs> that foodie stuff was not my bag. So I decided to work really hard to do it. I'm an Aquarius. We're crazy like that. Um, and, and to figure out a way to do it well. And uh, Hoodwink is the Thai tea. Now that's the one that got everybody's attention this time around, which is uh, so awesome. I love that. Thai iced tea, another one of my desert island uh, flavors. I could live on that stuff. Um, that one was also super challenging. If you are familiar with a lot of uh, fragrance oil or um, handcrafted perfume oils, uh, oils or perfumes that don't include um, alcohol. You have probably experienced what people like to call a tea note and is very rarely anything like an actual tea. Uh, so that was another one that I wanted to go and, and chase like a white whale and figure out a way to make something actually smell like tea. And after, you know, trying a bunch of different notes from a bunch of different places and also kind of conjuring a few things in my kitchen I was able to nail down what I think is a, a pretty authentic uh, Thai iced tea. And that's another one where I threw stuff in the jar that is probably a little bit unusual when it comes to making um, pure perfume oil. There's tea in there. There is there is Thai iced tea in there. Um, the leaves have been infusing the oil for a really long time. It's going to be one of those that's going to take longer to re-blend once I run out because that infusion of Thai tea has to sit in there for a while for, for there to be any richness of that, of that scent um, in the oil. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, how this stuff happens and what, what my mind is doing <laughs> while this stuff happens. And hopefully that entertained you for a little bit of, of these sequestered hours of ours. And I hope you have a really good one. Sending you guys lots of love and immense gratitude. And uh, thanks for keeping me going in so many different ways that I can't even tell you about. So anyway, before I start crying, have a great one, you guys.